I'm going to show you the way I organize my photography. So from the files on my disk to my Lightroom catalog. It's foolproof and future proof, no matter how little or how many pictures you take, regardless of device and regardless of genre. It's a pretty solid foundation for the way you could perhaps organize your images. Let's jump straight into it and I can show you my strategy. Okay, hate to get too nerdy with you guys, but I kind of love this stuff. This is how all information is laid out, essentially. Location, alphabetical, time, category, and hierarchy. Think about it this way. If you had 100,000 words dropped on the floor, you would organize them in one of these ways. Location could be something like an atlas, alphabetical, like a dictionary, time, history, category, encyclopedia, hierarchy, lists, maybe your top 10 lists. And inevitably, this is how you probably organize your catalog. And let's have a look at an example over here. So let's say you're a travel photographer or you like traveling and taking images and maybe your profession is to photograph models or you do it as a hobby in your spare time. Okay, so how do you organize your photos then? When it comes to location, is it by continent, country, town, district, landmark? Or if you have a job, how do you organize that? Do you photograph the model and then sort it out by location? Or maybe the model has different outfits. What do you do then? What do you do if you have different devices? And what do you do if you have specific dates that you want to attach to this organization? Basically, if you look at this system over here, it is very meaningful and contextual to you. However, in terms of a system to file this information, this is very ambiguous. And that's why I like to make the distinction of the way my files sit on my hard drive and the way I organize them in said software. And here we're talking about Lightroom. So following a time-based system to organize your files on your hard drive gives you a set of rules and parameters to follow that is very unambiguous. If you, for instance, organize all your photos in lo by location and then maybe by genre or maybe type of photography, it becomes very ambiguous and hard to sort out. Also, it may become difficult in the future when you accumulate something like a half a million photos. How do you organize it then? What happens if you want to sort out your backups, your off-site backups? Having all your images sorted out by time, by year, might be very easy for you to say, hey, I want to make a off-site backup of just my 2020 images. So you can do that. And then you can always look at them in bite-sized chunks to make sure everything is, is working as it should be. And that's how I organize my files on my hard drive, by year, by month, by day, and by device. When it comes to Lightroom, I utilize the very helpful collections where you can then add meaning to the files that are stored on your hard drive without actually touching them and messing with that organization. If you don't know what uh, collections are, I would stick around because we're gonna go through them. They are extremely helpful and basically they are the future of Lightroom and the future of organization in Lightroom. If you don't already use them, uh, you'll see how useful they are. And to reiterate, organizing your files on your hard drive by time will future-proof you. What happens if you wanna change your software? You wanna to switch to Capture One. Maybe you wanna do some video work. Maybe you wanna just switch operating systems and use different software that's only available for a specific operating system. That's why having this rule-based system of time organization is probably going to be best for you. Okay, so let's look at the files on my hard drive real quick, just so you can see how I've laid it out. So I have a folder per year, which helps you have a sort of uh, chronological order of all your images. I have a few other folders for other stuff like time lapses and exports. If we jump into 2019, you can see that I have all the months that I did shoot that year. So only six months out of the year that I shoot. And if we jump into, for instance, November, you can see that I have all the days that I photographed. So from the 2nd to the 8th, I've attached the description, Lake District starts, Lake District ends. So I know that during that time, I went to the Lake District. And then I didn't shoot again until the 30th when I went to do a time lapse in the morning. So if we look on the 6th, for instance, you can see here that I have 
by device. So I flew my drone that day. I shot with my Nikon D810 at the time and my Sony A6500 at the time. So shooting some video. So now I know on the 6th, I shot with these three devices and I have all my, my files in there. So now a very helpful tip if you want to organize your photos in this manner is to create a template file where you have all your empty files structured out in this way so that you can just every year or every time you change a device, you can copy and paste them across. This means that if you do all your organizations in one year and you don't have a template, the next year you'll need to recreate them because those files will be populated. This way, having the empty file system is going to be very helpful. Let's see how I've done it over here. So I have my, my days, my devices, and my months. So if we just go into devices, you can see here, these are all the devices that I've had uh, throughout my, my photography. So yeah, you can see that I will use all these and they're just empty folders basically, and I'll copy them over. And what I'll do is I'll copy them over to my folder called days and put them in each folder here. So in my days folder, I have them organized as 0, 1 to 31 you'll see that they are alphanumeric days of the month. And then when it comes to an actual trip, I will just annotate them and say, this is when the trip started and this is when it ended. And I'll basically copy these into the months file. Uh, okay, and then when you go into months, then you'll have them 0, 1 to 12. Once again, it just helps you with organization. So it's not alphabetical in that sense. Uh, and yeah, basically it's just the months, right? So then I'll copy and go into January and copy in the the days folder, which will then have the devices. And with that system set out, then I can copy them over to each year. And then I'll create a folder per year. So next year, it'll be 2024. So then I'll copy all these months, days, and then devices into there. Okay, so now I just want to quickly go through Lightroom and show you folders and show you collections and the way I use them. So let me just hide myself real quick. Okay, so you can see here, we are on my hard drive. So we're in folders, we're looking at the hard drive, we're looking at 2021, the 10th month, October, the 9th, and we're looking at my device, right? So the Nikon D850. And you can see here that I've took all these pictures on this day. And this is a foggy sunrise at Richmond Park here in London. Now that's all well and good. But you don't essentially want to change your folders or mess with any of your images in here. And for the longest time before I used collections, this is what I would have done. And it became quite difficult for me to come up with a scenario where I'm like, hey, I want to view just all my Richmond Park pictures. And that became increasingly difficult, having to navigate through all the folders sorted out by time which is very helpful for backing up as we've established, but not very helpful for browsing. And that's where collections comes in. Because if you look at the collections over here, all right, so let me just hold the, hide the folders up and open up the collections. What I've essentially done is now categorized them in a way that's meaningful. So for me, this is going to be by location. For you, this may be by genre. Hey, maybe it's uh, by type of photography, I want all my macro shots in here, or I want all my travel images, or I want all my pictures of people, and I want to set them up this way. And collections are basically just file systems that refer back to the files on the disk. But these are basically like virtual copies, in a sense that they don't affect any of the files in the folder, and they just use them as reference. So these are just referenced photos and you can organize them in any way. So you can see over here, I have a picture of a deer. Well, in collections, I can say, hey, I want to organize this in a few ways. So I can essentially put this in a folder called wildlife, put this in a folder called Richmond Park and put this in a file called telephoto images, however I wish. And I can have this one file sitting in all these different types of collections. So let me just show you how this works over here. So if I go into London, which I've now subcategorized London as I shoot many landmarks in London and different locations. So Richmond Park is a location, but I also shoot quite a few landmarks. Uh, so for instance, Albert Bridge, which is one of my favorite bridges in, Rich, uh, in London. So in my London set, right? So this icon indicates that it's a set. And these are just the actual collections. 
this image over here, which is referring to my folder on my hard drive, is now in the collections called Richmond Park. But I haven't created any sub collection or subset of this that is refined more. So I have the images of wildlife right next to the images I have of all the woodland shots that I shoot, which is predominantly what I shoot when I go to Richmond Park. So what can I do here? Well, what I can do is I can create, and I'm going to show you a little bit of a couple of tips over here, is I can create a set of images called Richmond Park, right? So if I create a co collection set over here, now I'm going to call this Richmond Park set. And I'm going to put this inside London. And now what I can do is I can grab this collection or I can create a new one. So I can go into here and I can say, hey, I want to create a collection called Wildlife inside Richmond Park, right? And then I also have the option over here to set as a target collection. I'm actually going to click that because I want to show you what we can do. So I'm going to create that set. Okay. Now you'll see a plus icon there, which indicates that it's a targeted set. So ignore that just for now. When well, I'm going to go in here to Richmond Park, I'm going to create another collection called Woodland. So now within London, we have Richmond Park set, Wildlife and Woodland. And now if I wanted to further organize my catalog, I can do that, right? So for instance, you can see there's a little deer in some hoar-frosted uh, heather. Now, what I can do with this image is I can throw this into the wildlife. And it's as simple as dragging it into there. But what you can do now that I've set that as a targeted location, I can just hit the B key, which will add it to the targeted location. As you can see here, now I have one image in there. Well, this is really nice if you set a target location and you just want to quickly go through your images, uh, put through the images that you think are best. Look at grid view and be like, okay, I can see that all these pictures are basically wildlife. I can copy them all and just hit B and then they'll all get added there. And then I can continue going through here and doing that for all my wood, uh, all my pictures of wildlife. Okay, and then for my woodland images, then when it comes to Richmond Park, let's say I can just grab all of these all the way down here. Let's just say to the first image I see of a deer, and then I can grab that and just throw it into woodland. And there it is. Uh, so yeah, your possibilities are endless. And that's why I love collections, because this way you're able to just create as many collections as you want and referencing any images that you want. And also, collections are really nice because you can do things like export collections and share collections. And you'll see, I don't know if you guys have seen them, but the web services where you can like publish collections uh, makes things really easy. Hey, I want to publish this collection for a client to see just these, these images in this collection. Or you'll have a collection if you are working with your portfolio online and be like, okay, keep all these photos in my portfolio online. So on your website. And then if you keep that collection updated, if you add something new, it gets like automatically populated on your website. So collections basically is really, really powerful. Now, just to show you a more contextual way of using collections and how I sometimes use them is that I was working on a particularly difficult uh, edit, right? So what I did is I took that collection of edits and just put them temporarily in a collection called Corf Castle Edit. Because when I was out shooting, I did a focus stack and I also did a, an exposure bracketing, right? So I had to combine all these images together to create a final image. And it got really complicated and I just wanted a way to, to have them separate while I sort them out. But yeah, nonetheless, just show, wanted to show you a different way of using them. And this is very, very hyper contextual for this just particular image that I was working on editing. Okay, I'm not going to ramble for too much longer. Hopefully you saw the power of collections and then organizing your photos on your hard drive and a few tips on how you could go about doing that for you. If you're not already organizing this way, it takes a few hours. Just get over and done with and you're set basically for life if you do it this way. Hopefully that's helped you guys and I'll see you in the next one.